The Lakers crowd had an eerie vibe to it early, but ended up being on their feet for all of the fourth quarter in anticipation of what was ultimately an all-time battle between LeBron and Curry. That initial eerie vibe was potentially because of the fact that the GOAT Scott Foster, aka the quote-unquote series extender, was refing, so you'd be thinking the league's agenda would have been influencing this game in order to milk as many games as possible out of a marketable series. The D-Flow has certainly been the milking a ton of the content out of this series, yet has stayed the unbiased, unlike what Scott Foster has been known to be, which is why it was sketchy to see that he was assigned to this game, especially after all of the outrage from Dub Nation across the Twitter sphere entering Game 4. Thankfully, all of the crew chief in Scott Foster, plus the two other officials made this a well-officiated bout, one in which LeBron Raymond James Sr. inflicted his will on all night long. With help from his undercover teammate LeDraymond Green, who revealed a private conversation between he and Steph on his podcast, in addition to the Chris Haynes, who made Le D flows the presence felt when referring to the social media narrative from game to game, LeBron just dominated to fuel the purple and gold to a 3-1 series advantage. 95% of teams who go up 3-1 go on to win the playoff series, so stay tuned to see if Hollywood's best basketball team can close it out. And every the narrative the revolving the around the title the bound the Lakers. The before that, just the 12.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave the thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow the at Dflow Hoops on the Instagram and the Twitter. King James just took the narrative and ran with it as down the stretch, this man was just unstoppable getting downhill. Man dropped his second highest total of the playoffs. Let's stay tuned for more on King in a minute that you can't miss. But second biggest storyline in this one was Lil Lonnie Walker. In all seriousness, you gotta admit that seeing Lil Skywalker stay ready over these last two games after being limited to garbage time and that alone for almost the entire second half of the season, the post-trade deadline and the playoffs has been the inspirational. This man Lonnie was draining clutch buckets the down the stretch as in the fourth quarter alone, he had 15 points. Walker was taking shots you wouldn't expect a role player to have the confidence to take, let alone make. Off-balance contested bombs fell through for the Skywalker, one after the next, as this man defines the phrase X-Factor. For a player being completely out of the rotation to do what Walker's done should be in large part credited to coach Darvin Ham for keeping the locker room vibes up. We also have to quickly give credit to Anthony Davis, who had his second straight good game for the first time in these playoffs. More on AD in tomorrow's film breakdown. On the other hand, if you're a Warriors fan, Dub Nation would see their chemistry seemingly implode late in the game. Based off both their late game execution and their body language, Gary Payton was outstanding for Golden State. He had eight consecutive third quarter points. I thought he gave the Warriors a versatile group with his screen setting and generally his quickness. Biggest takeaway from this game though, was the fact that it was the best of the series by far in terms of the back and forth clash it was between LeBron and LeSteph. While LeSteph had the 30 point triple double, unfortunately what his performance will be remembered for was missing two potential game winning shots. Draymond would bang his head down on the hardwood at 100 miles per hour showing you the underratedly ruthless aspect of basketball. This man Green is so tough though that he didn't even go back to the locker room to get screened for a concussion. In terms of LeDre's overall performance, he was fulfilling his role as Laker undercover agent. Draymond possible. You know that you always get Draymond possible. was mixing up elusive moments like playing great defense on LeBron to hide his cover with passes directly to the Warriors' the bench. Draymond had consecutive turnovers in the second quarter, ultimately finishing with five giveaways. He was a minus 10 in this one. While Draymond may be a great friend of LeBron's, a fellow Clutch Sports member, and a big fan of Lanier 40-year-old's legacy, there's no denying that by being closer with LeBron than any of his own teammates, with someone in the Western Conference that he's forced to be enemies with between the lines, 
his buddy-buddy strategy was at least somewhat to buy real estate so he could use it to his advantage when need be. What's weird about this is the fact that you'd think as one of LeBron's biggest fans, Draymond would know what had happened to people who had tried to troll James in the past. Dylan Brooks is nearly a member of the Guangdong Tigers after what LeBron did to him only a few weeks ago. Even the owner of LaVerry Podcast that he commentates on after every game in Colin Cowherd hilariously trolled LeBron and learned his lesson a few years ago. LeBron's not going to win the championship because they just lost Avery Bradley. And I know what you're saying. What's Avery Bradley? He's a piece. The only question for the Lakers is when they lose to the Clippers or Milwaukee or Boston, then what does LeBron do next? They, you can't depend solely on LeBron. And no, this is one of these stories in sports nobody's paying attention to. Avery Bradley is a real player. He is a real player in a championship team. 24 minutes, 9 points a game, 44% from the field, third best defensive player. So now the rotation, I mean the Lakers playoff hopes are down to LeBron, AD, Danny Green, and cross your fingers. And that's it, it's over. This historic 2020 NBA championship belongs to the Los Angeles Lakers. Definitely a big time ouch from Draymond's boss and Colin, but what if I told you even after LeBron went on to win that 2020 championship, after that take from Colin, Cowherd had a LeBron take that was impressively 10 times worse than that. You know I love LeBron. I've talked about him incessantly for a decade. I still think he is absolutely remarkable. But for the first time in 10 to 12 years, I look at the NBA, which I've watched for four decades, and I say this now with Ben Simmons. Hey, LeBron, we're good, bro. You, you can go. You don't have to. You can hang around. Still great, but you can go. We're all good here. I never bought into it with Blake Griffin. Despite what he did last night, I've never bought into it with Anthony Davis. Russell Westbrook doesn't drive me to a TV to that level. But when I watch Ben Simmons play, and again, I don't know if the Sixers are special, but when I watch Ben Simmons play, it is just a gut feeling. That is something between LeBron and Magic. Yikes. Assuming rookie Ben Simmons was going to replace LeBron doesn't look great. At nearly 40, LeBron's now one win away from fueling the Lakers into the conference finals, while Ben Simmons has been rocking street clothes for about two seasons. And no, Draymond's never said anything as dumb as Colin Cowherd or Dylan Brooks. He did say on his podcast after his team's Game 3 loss, though, entering another L on Monday, that Curry said to him during the game that he quote-unquote can't figure out LeBron. While that seems like it was a take in favor of James and against his own team, so we joke around calling him an undercover agent, let's think a little deeper about this attempted connection from Draymond. Assuming his loyalties with the Warriors haven't gone astray, as he's claimed they haven't in the past, then all of the complimenting of LeBron, information revealing to LeBron, must be because he's using reverse psychology in order to enter LeBron's head. If that reverse psychology theory isn't the case, and it's genuine love he's showing towards LeBron, that would mean that Draymond's loyalties to this warrior organization have gone astray. It's one of the two, so assuming it's the former, being the assumption that this is a reverse psychology method and Draymond is totally loyal to the Warriors and trying to get in LeBron's head, then that means Green is in the midst of learning what happens when you troll LeBron Ramon James Sr. Again, his boss, LeColin Cowherd, already learned that lesson, but guess it just took a little bit more time for Draymond. All jokes aside, guys, I'll have a non-trolling-esque film breakdown tomorrow, looking at LA's moments and why this Game 4 was the best of the series, but the point of this video? Don't troll Le Four Ring King, Le Akron Born Assassin, Le Chosen One, or do if you want to see him win. Whether it was Le Jack Nicholas in the house for a second time in these playoffs, Le Kim Kardashian, the list of Le Celebs goes on and on, when the entire world was watching, LeBron Raymond James Sr. stood up to the moment better than any player on the court, making his impact felt by either ravaging downhill, hitting patented fallaways in the lane, sprinting from one end to the other, whether shooting Le Triples or playing lockdown Le Defense, Le Man was special and then some. In 43 minutes at Lanier 40, Man dropped 27 points, 9 boards, 6 dimes, and LeBlanc. Scary part is, 
there's room for even more dominance as he didn't even shoot that well from the field. 